The first spacecraft to explore space beyond Earth orbit was Pioneer 4 in 1959. 25 years later, in 1984, astronomers Carl Sagan and Jill Tata founded the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI, a program that has been scouring the cosmos for signs of alien life ever since. But to date, neither an international armada of robotic spacefarers nor alien-seeking scientists have found any evidence of extraterrestrial life. Indeed, while our exploration of the solar system has been nothing short of staggering in terms of the images and scientific data obtained. The worlds we visited beyond Earth all appear to be completely sterile. Even the most dedicated SETI researcher would have to admit that, at least so far, our efforts to find life elsewhere in the universe have been met with an uncomfortable, stony silence. But why? In 2000, two researchers, Peter Ward and Donald Brownlee, published a book that offered a possible explanation for our species' apparent aloneness. It is called Rare Earth, Why Complex Life is Uncommon in the Universe. Ward, a paleontologist by training, and Brownlee, an astronomer, combined forces to produce what has come to be termed the Rare Earth Hypothesis. Simply stated, the Rare Earth Hypothesis suggests that the very unique conditions of Earth that allowed complex life to rise and flourish are exceptionally uncommon and they are unlikely to widely occur throughout the universe. Ward and Brownlee postulated that many fortuitous features on Earth, our Sun and the solar system, led to a highly favorable and surprisingly stable ecosystem. While some of these properties had been widely discussed in astronomy circles before, others had scarcely been mentioned. The Rare Earth Hypothesis focuses on numerous aspects of Earth and its environment that played a role in allowing complex life to develop. Let's go through some key factors for life as we know it. A planet that exists in a favorable part of the right kind of galaxy where significant amounts of heavy elements available and sterilizing radiation sources are located far away. An orbit around a star that has been a long lifetime but does not give off too much ultraviolet radiation. An orbital distance that allows liquid water to exist at or near the planet's surface. An orbital distance that is far enough away to prevent the planet from becoming tidally locked to its host star. An orbit that is stable around its host star over cosmic time scales. A planetary tilt that allows for seasonal atmospheric changes to be mild, not severe. A solar system that includes gas giants capable of preventing debris from polluting the inner solar system, reducing the odds of major cosmic impacts and subsequent mass extinctions. A planetary mass large enough to both retain an atmosphere and allow for liquid oceans. A moon large enough to help stabilize the tilt of the planet's axis. A molten planetary core that generates a significant global magnetic field, largely protecting the surface from solar radiation. The presence of oxygen and the right amount of oxygen at the right time for complex life to utilize it. The presence of plate tectonics 
which build up land masses, create diverse ecosystems, cycle carbon into and out of the atmosphere, prevent a runaway greenhouse effect and help stabilize the surface temperature worldwide. Ward and Brownlee challenged many widely held notions that supported the idea that complex life is out there waiting to be found. For example, while astronomer Carl Sagan often opined that our sun is an unremarkable star, in reality about 80 to 95 percent of stars are significantly different from our own in terms of size, mass, luminosity, lifespan, and many other factors. Furthermore, prior researchers who had attempted to answer the question of why life on Earth was so plentiful, yet so rare in the universe, had not included plate tectonics in their thinking at all. Indeed, an entire chapter in their book, Rare Earth, is devoted to the topic going to great lengths to explain the role of plate tectonics in shaping Earth into a good place for life. Earth is, to the best of our knowledge, the only body in the solar system with active plate tectonics, and there are many other features of our life-friendly planet that we haven't seen replicated anywhere else in the universe too. It is important to remember that the rare earth hypothesis only applies to the emergence of complex life. Ward and Brownlee believe that simple life such as bacteria is widespread in the universe. After all, even the harshest habitats on earth harbors microbes. However, the pair feel that complex life, metazoans like animals and us, are exceptionally rare. If you find life elsewhere, it's likely to be microbial, said Brownlee. You know Earth will have a lifetime of about 12 billion years, but compared to bacteria, metazoans have a much more restricted range of environmental criteria that can survive in. That means that a planet's environment is conducive to simple life for much longer than it is conducive to complex life. The period of time when we have oxygen in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide to go to plants and oxygen for metazoans is probably only like 10 or 20 percent of Earth's lifespan. So if you just landed on our planet, randomly throughout its entire history, you would not have anything to see. Just because Ward and Brownlee don't believe complex life is common throughout the universe, that doesn't mean they don't want it found. The duo welcome new data from cutting-edge observatories like the James Webb Space Telescope, which seek to reveal the atmospheres of exoplanets in detail. And there are certain atmospheric signatures that would be more revealing than others. I think it is way more important to try to look for oxygen atmospheres, but also look for reflections that indicate chlorophyll. You are only going to have a number of ways to build specific molecules, said Ward. It really does come back to the fact that, as University of Washington planetary scientist David Catling has said, any animal equivalent is going to have to need oxygen. A lot of it. You cannot have really rapidly moving creatures and rapidly thinking creatures, which is a form of movement, and not have oxygen in the atmosphere to do it. You're not going to have people living on carbon dioxide out there, he added. While compelling, the rare earth hypothesis still has its detractors. Many of the environmental factors Ward and Brownlee identified in their book have come under fire over the past 20 years. 
Among the most frequently attacked proposed conditions for complex life is that a large planet like Jupiter is required to keep the inner solar system relatively free of dangerous debris. Some researchers argue such planets could actually increase the frequency of planetary impacts. Other critics have taken issues with the proposed requirements of a global magnetic field and plate tectonics. With regard to these criticisms, what is understanding encouraging challenges to his ideas? He stated this, good science does a couple of things. He says, but the most important thing it does is stimulate other science. Good science makes people angry. It makes some people angry enough that they go out and do something about it. The rare earth hypothesis remains unproven, but it is hard to ignore the plethora of data that Ward and Brownlee have compiled to support their case. The barren and stark surfaces of Mercury, Venus and Mars all serve as nearby reminders of what a lucky paradise Earth is by comparison. And rare or not, it's the only home we have. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more videos about our amazing world.